So, uh, according to this little doohickey here, I've been away for quite a while. Sorry about that, guys, but I'm back now and just in time because I'm here to show you how I made my Fallout 4 inspired Vault Dweller with combat armor. The show has just aired on Amazon Prime. This is not sponsored. I'm just a big fan of Fallout and have been for quite a long time now and I finally got around to actually doing a Fallout costume so let me take you through how I did it. So first up I'm actually going to take you through how I made this which is my combat armor. So as I said this is actually based off of Fallout 4. As you can see I've got some stuff that sort of pertains to the factions that are in that game. So the actual armor itself is made out of EVA foam. You can kind of see all my joins on the underside here. So I'm in the UK so I always get my EVA foam from a company called Polyprops. They do a bunch of different densities, a bunch of different thicknesses and colours. I normally just work with the standard dark grey in CF100 which is a fairly dense one so it's nice to get sort of sharp angles on it as well as putting a good bit of detail in it and it's pretty sturdy. The actual template for making the armour has come from someone called Windley Creations on Etsy. It's a digital download for £10 and 7 pence. Definitely worth it. They've got all the templates and a full list of instructions they've done to take you through how they actually assembled it. So even if you're like, oh, I'm not really sure how to work with foam in this aspect, they've got the whole instructions on there and they're really well done. So definitely worth it. The only thing I changed up on mine was for the main base of their armour, they said they use 10mm foam and my personal preference is actually to use 8mm. So it's a little bit thinner but I find 8mm to be easier to work with than 10mm and it's not as clunky so I've got a slightly more sort of streamlined sort of shape but you work with what you've got. The other minor detail I changed was, see these little sort of raised bits on here, these little studs. Most of the time if you're looking for detail like that, googly eyes are the best thing and I believe that's what Winnie Creations also says in their instructions. Uh, but I didn't have any googly eyes anywhere. So I actually went to a local hardware store and these are little plastic caps you put over screws in furniture so you don't see the screws. And uh, they're about the right size. That's what worked out for me. So I know I haven't been around for a while and uh, Falling out of the habit of filming everything, I kind of forgot to film uh, the painting and actual final assembly of these pieces. But there is something I can do for you. So here I've put together this random little piece of foam, a couple of raised bits, some indents and some other detail pieces. Just used the Dremel just to zzz, get those on there because these are also in the instructions for the combat armour. And I'm actually going to show you all my paint techniques on this. So basically we're going to take a blank piece of foam and make it look like this and take you through all the weathering as well. A lot of the weathering I used on this whole costume is just a lot of rinse and repeat of the same techniques. So once I teach you these techniques, you can use that across the whole board. So once you've assembled all your cut pieces together to make the base shape of the armor, and it looks a little something like this, you're gonna to wanna to get your foam piece and you're gonna to wanna to heat seal it with a heat gun. And of course, do be careful if you're holding a piece of foam like me and going over with a heat gun, make sure you don't burn yourself. But now you can see our foam's got this really nice shiny texture to it. So this is basically what I use as a kind of a primer to start painting on foam. So this is Plaster Dip. I buy mine off of eBay. Uh, some companies like Polyprops do actually have their own brand. I do find the actual Plaster Dip one tends to work better than the other ones but the others are still valid but if you don't have any plastic dip you can also use a PVA water it down a little bit you can brush it on that will also help seal your foam this is basically just something that the uh, paint can stick to and it just really helps on a surface that is quite bendy just to minimize cracking and damage that little bit more this stuff is also pretty toxic and if you're working with spray paints I always recommend using a respirator and you can even make it look like an old piece of vault tech equipment if you really want it. Oh, so I had barely any left in that can, so it wasn't coming out very well, but this has now got a layer of plaster dip on it. See, the coverage is not super awesome because I didn't have that much left. But when you're using plaster dip, you kind of want to leave it for an hour to dry. Uh, if you're doing something that you want to be nice and smooth, you can do multiple layers. Again, leave it a good amount of time before doing each layer. But for this, we actually kind of don't want it to be neat. 
you kind of want to have some texture to it. Now you can do this in two different ways, which I'm going to show you. The first way, again, is we got to go get the heat gun. So the heavier the plastic dip application, the better this works, but you can still sort of focus on areas and sort of get this nice sort of little pickling indentation look. So when you're weathering and doing like a black wash, I can get all stuck in there. And again, helps with if you want some different texture on like rust patches. If you're gonna do this method, I would suggest you do it before you add any extra detail pieces on the top, but there is a second method. You can use some of this which is a stone spray. So what you see on the lid here is the texture you get. So this is essentially more like a glue than it is a paint and it's got some little chunky flecks in it. But what we can do is spray it on and then use it to create texture underneath our paint. And here it is with a bit of that texture paint on it. If it goes on areas where you're like, I kind of don't want it to sort of be there, as you spray it on, it's going to be wet, so you can just kind of like mush it down a little bit. So I've just focused mainly on this side and on this area, just sort of brushed it away so you can kind of still see where we've done sort of the heat gun method. And so before we add the colour that we want, which is going to be this one, which I got from Halfords, it's Rover Applejack Green. We need to prime this so the colour looks a lot nicer with a uh, proper prime base color underneath so just going to use a standard gray primer there we go this is prime so you can now see where we've got texture even better now if i bring it up close here you can sort of see this is sort of where the nice stone texture paint is that's our heat gun area this side's a little bit more smooth there's a little patch here So the Applejack Green, when it dries, even though it doesn't say so, this one comes out quite glossy. So I've also gone over the piece with a matte lacquer. And um, while that dries, I'm just going to show you some of the stuff that I've used for the weathering on here. So we've got some acrylic paints. So we've got black, brown, and orange. An assortment of well-used brushes. A couple of bits of sponge. And a little washing up sponge that's got this scotch bright on the top or just a fine scotch bright if you have that on its own and some of this stuff which is full as earth this is basically like powdery clay substance but you don't need to buy this if you're like a miniature painter and you've got some of that scenic soil stuff you can use that as well it's just you want something in the paint that gives a bit of grit basically so to start off with we're going to start with our black wash so we need a little bit of black acrylic and some brown some water in there So you get there's our black wash. Again, you can buy paints that are specifically made for black washing. Again, for miniature stuff, but if you're painting big things, I think it's probably cheaper just to go for acrylic and just mix it up. So here's our little guy, all dry now. Still got a bit of a sheen to it, but we'll be able to take that down a bit with the paint as well. Paint a little bit on, just get in all the corners. So essentially what you're kind of doing is spreading it out and sort of like dabbing it dry as you go. Now we wait a few minutes for that to uh, dry. So it's nice and spread out. You kind of don't get any um, brush marks in it. And then get your sponge with a bit of water. And just wipe it off. So you're basically catching highlighted areas. So there you go. And so you can see those areas where we've got the different texture and how it picks up. Especially when you've got sort of the spray stone underneath. So those areas are now quite light in comparison to the background. So you can kind of see the difference there. And it just looks real nice as opposed to just brushing it on and wiping it off immediately. You kind of treat this more like with chalkboard paint that I've done for armor. So put it on, let it dry for a little bit, and then wipe it off. 
So at this point, you can also add some little decal stuff if you wanted. So you notice on my combat armor, it's got the little star on the front. So we're just gonna stick this little guy on. So you can hand paint this, you can spray paint it, you can airbrush it. See, if you spray paint, you need to mask everything off because it's gonna be a load of overspray. You don't need to do that so much when you've actually got an airbrush or you can just go over it by hand. So I'll show you that method as well. So also I want to make this decal look worn, again the same as on my costume. So to get that paint chip look, just got some of this liquid latex. I'm just using a little cocktail stick and I'm just going to go and pick out some areas that I want covered. And then once you're happy with the placement of that, you just gotta wait a little bit for the latex to dry. So you can see the latex is now dry. That's that nice shiny bit there. So I'm just gonna hand paint this on. That's it. There are other methods you can do. Don't have to hand paint it, but this is what you have to hand. So it's got some white acrylic. And I'm just gonna gently go over this star. Now that's dry, we'll just peel off our little masking tape template. This is some of it's already coming off with it. We had a little bit of paint bleed, but that's okay. We'll just one tiny bit of latex I can see is still on there, so we're just gonna. Yeah. So that's our star decal. So again, what we can do for this, just to blend it in with the rest, is we'll just now this masking technique can also be used if you want some like metal peeking through on the other side here. I mean, you can paint it on after this if you're like, mm, I want to like go around these little edges. Or what you can do is you can paint silver on it first, use that masking technique to mask up where you want to keep the silver, then spray your base colour. You can dry brush, whatever you like, but we're just going to keep it like this today. So just using the rough side of the sponge on that one just to get rid of any areas I thought were a bit too dark. So uh, the paint now sits nicely and all these little textured areas that we've made. Now let's do the rust. So I'm gonna mix up some brown, some orange, and a tiny bit of black. I'm gonna add in a little bit of whatever sort of grit you're gonna be using. And some water. So what we do with our brush, let's get a bit and just start dabbing it on particular areas you want it to be. I'm just sort of again, feathering the edge with a, a sponge. It's kind of working it the same way that the black wash has been worked. And I just sort of start going in and adding, making it a little bit more sort of heavy. Sort of go at it with some layers. So it's a bit easier to see where it's wet, but sort of the heavier parts where the texture is. And then when it dries properly, that'll just be a nice sort of like little lumpy, gritty bit. And if you want to make it more dirty, add like a load of like sort of scenic soil and stuff. That's just a nice easy way to do it. So here is our little demonstration piece in comparison with the armor. So this is like where I mentioned you can also use the masking if you spray some silver underneath before you do your main color. Cause I've just added a little bullet dent on the chest again, just to make it look a little bit cooler. 
See the star on the front was sprayed, so it's a nice flat texture. The railroad ally symbol was hand painted on like this star, so texture's a little bit rougher. It doesn't look a huge amount of difference. I was gonna try and make it look a little bit sort of chalkier, but it looked better being a brighter white, so it's gone more solid. Again, the exact same, just masking stuff off, using um, liquid latex just to roughen the edges up. Yeah, make it look a bit more hand painted and worn. And some other small details representing a few of the factions in the game. So these are all glued in place and these bits of duct tape are just for show, just to be like, oh, this is how it's attached to the thing. But most of it's glued in place, so it's not gonna go anywhere. So we have up top the Minutemen flag, this and our Valentine Detective Agency sign because Nick Valentine is my favourite companion. So of course I've got to have him on there. These are all made using uh, leather offcuts and just some paint pens going over the top. Again, we just use some black to sort of darken it up and go in all these nice corners again, make it look all nice and warm. And our final one is the Silver Shroud calling card. So this is just a little sheet of a card where I just uh, traced out the uh, Silver Shroud character and just drew him on. This is just in Sharpie and uh, use a bit of a clear tape just to go over the top and make sure that it's all sealed before I do all the, the weathering on there just to make sure it doesn't make anything underneath bleed. And yeah, that's glued on as well. So now we've painted our armour. We've obviously got to strap it together. Again, all in the tutorial that Windley has done, they've also put in how to do all the strappings, which is fantastic. They've made theirs out of foam, but I've gone for actually finding a load of belts in a charity shop. Thankfully, all the same make, so it's all the same colour. And use those to actually make my leather straps, just so I know that if anything is going to break, it's not going to be the strapping. So on pretty much all these buckles here, which are actually very high density, thin EVA foam, so they're pretty strong. It's just a Velcro connection to take them on and off. So really nice and simple, just loop it through, connect it up. Obviously you can just make it as tight or as loose as you want. These parts here are all glued onto the underside. Parts like this with this little popper here, this is actually all glued together. So you can't take this apart. And what I have done is I've got some poppers or push fasteners and just taken one side of it made a hole in the leather and glued it in place obviously to make it look like that that's the connection. But the actual connection for this piece is the Velcro that goes through this side up and underneath. Also, because the back is kind of a little bit visible at some points, I've just got some uh, self-adhesive felt just to cover the inside so you kind of can't see the glue or where the straps end. It just keeps it looking nice and neat. Also means it's not going to rub or catch on any part of my suit. So I just tend to keep it all together in sort of one like t-shirt piece. So I can put it on like this and I don't need any assistance. So then I've also got these arms attached and I've done it so the straps, again, made out of the same belts, just cut them down so they're these nice thinner pieces. So those just attach again to the Velcro that is underneath the arm. Now there is one piece on this armor which you might notice doesn't actually come from the game and it's this little strap here that actually keeps it connected to the shoulder bit. So you don't see that in the game, they are just attached via your bicep straps but just to make sure they stay in place and they're not just going to keep falling down which is always an annoyance. I've got some thinner leather from an old leather apron I just cut up and used for those. So it's literally just a loop. So when you undo the straps, you can loop these on, do them back up again, and they stay. So they're not gonna fall down during the day. And of course, all the straps and all the buckles are all weathered pretty much the same as the rest of the armor, just so everything's nice and uniform and looks good. And one of the other main pieces of the combat armor is the belt. And as you can see, the legs are always attached to this as well. So the legs made the exact same as the torso, the same strapping system. I've just added some duct tape on this one and painted around it as like a quick wasteland fix up, like in an emergency. I'm sure these things have been around for a while. 
and got the same strapping system on the belt which basically just keeps them from falling down your leg when you're walking around a con all day. The actual leather belt itself is a second hand belt and the main reason for getting this is actually because it's a, uh, a double pronged buckle. I don't know the official term for it. And of course on the back here we've got all of our military surplus so we've got some pouches and a water canteen. I found these from a website called Military First and again weathered them up with a little bit of paint, uh, scuffed the uh, push fastener so you can see the metal underneath and also just went at the edges with the Dremel just to try and rough them up again just make them look like they've been around for a while. The canteen on the combat armour itself in the game is actually a silver metal one which I haven't been able to find a decent one yet so I've just got the uh, plastic one that came with this nice little pouch here. The one upside though for this being actually a brand new canteen is I know it's clean enough I can actually drink out of it. So this is how it looks currently. I've also got a little vault tech lunchbox at the back here and I might be adding some other little trinkets just to fill in this gap in the front but I've got my nice military surplus pouches which are nice and big so I can fit stuff like my phone and things in here as well. I'm also thinking about putting a speaker so I can blast some casual 50s tunes out. But for now I've just got, you know, some caps, a couple of chems, and for any pouches that don't have anything to sort of bog them out, but to make them still look like they're full, just a couple of bits of EVA foam glued together to sort of give the illusion of having the pouches look nice and full. So I'm not very good at sewing so I would have had to buy my own vault suit, but my buddy actually bought it for me for Christmas. Uh, it was half price, so when he got it, it was £35, but it normally goes for around 60 This is from a company called Mick Costumes, and it's uh, sort of the basic model that I kind of see a lot of vault dwellers wear. It's, again, based off of Fallout 4, which is kind of what the TV show is sort of based off of, the Fallout 4 and 76 style, but they've obviously taken it and made it look extra nice with some different detailing in a couple of different fabrics. So this is all made out of one fabric and you can see all this nice panelling is sort of stitched in on the arms and the chest and the nice gold trim as well. And it's actually a two-piece vault suit so we've got this top half and we've got the trousers. So the actual suit in the games and the show is one full jumpsuit but at least this way it's a lot easier to go to the bathroom especially when you have all the armor on on top. So as some of you may know if you buy costumes like this from certain companies if there's parts on the actual sort of reference costume that are metal they normally get replicated in just silver foam leather which is what this had. So those pieces I actually replaced with some EVA foam little greeblies and they're all painted and weathered in the same style that I did the combat armor. Obviously these are just a nice silver metallic. And these are all actually attached via velcro so when I need to wash the vault suit I can take them all off and wash it easily without worrying about damaging them or losing them. So this little guy here for example comes off just like that. And it's heavy duty velcro that's glued onto one side and some sew on velcro on the other side. Heavy duty velcro tends to be the sticky stuff. Uh, you don't really want to sew the sticky stuff, it messes up your needles and it's very hard to sew on. So just hand sewn into place. So all of these guys are the same, as you can see there. One of the other details I replaced was actually this cable that runs from the sort of front greebly all the way down my back. When I originally got the costume it was just like a sort of little piece of just sort of black soft rope kind of stuff that went up and through. So I got an old cable, you know you've got those drawers of cables that you haven't used for years and you don't know what they are. Put one to good use, just chopped off like the plug and just stuck it on there. Also replace the actual loops it went through. Again, they use the sort of silver metallic -y faux leather bit that doesn't match what's in the game. So I've actually got some black elastic. It's a nice sort of thick elastic just to make sure it holds in place on the front. And actually, when it goes over the shoulder, that black elastic gets changed up and replaced with blue material that sort of matches the blue of the undersuit. So actually some white elastic and then just sort of painted it blue to try and match the blue that's on here. Another piece that I changed on this which is actually adding some poppers. So one of the main ones is actually on the neck here because this just came like this, this bit just stays undone. Again I don't think it's done up in the game, it's just a little detail that hangs down like that but I wanted to keep mine closed so these are just sew on push fasteners that I got from the fabric store. So just nice and easy. Attaches to there and you can't see the thread of the, uh, the little push fastener underneath because it is then hidden by the little greebly that's a velcroed on over the top there. I've also sewn in a couple at the bottom here as well as on the back of the waist and sewn the other halves to the bottom of my vault suit. 
So this means stuff isn't gonna ride up when I bend over, you're not gonna see any of the compression gear I'm wearing underneath. It just makes it look like just one nice seamless bodysuit. And again, just helps with keeping this down and in a really nice shape because with certain costumes I find when you actually have a zip and you do it up, sometimes I just go like that. You can kind of see the, the zip sort of bunches at the front a little bit. So like you get kind of a uh, uh, you kind of look a bit weird and lumpy. So just having it, pulling it down just means you've got a little bit more of a just nice flat line at the front. Another detail of this that I changed is actually on the back, which is my vault number. So again, as this is based on Fallout 4, my vault number is vault 111. And the actual number that came with the suit, again, it was 111, but it was just three thin strips of the same gold fabric sewn on the back. So it didn't look the same as it does in game, which normally wouldn't bother me but I kind of just wanted to improve upon it a little bit. As I said my sewing skills aren't great. I'm more of an armour person but I found some gold fabric online that I thought might be a fairly close match and then I also painted it up a little bit just to try and get the tone to match this a little bit more because I couldn't find this exact fabric. And then I sewed these onto the back. It's fairly neat. It's a little bit bunchy but you know I've been in the wasteland for a little bit. It's not going to be perfect and also that kind of mostly gets hidden by the combat armour as well so. The last part that I changed up as well was these. These little leather van brace thingies. So again that ones that came with the costume, fairly decent. You could just weather them up and leave them as that but I wanted mine to look a bit nicer and have a bit more detail on them so I used those to actually template these out of proper leather. So where I work we actually have a leather scraps box from projects where we have to work with real leather. So I raided the leather scraps box and found just enough pieces just to make these two guys. So these are just velcro so I can take them off. So it's just a nice thin bit of uh, veg tan leather that I cut, dyed, engraved and all weathered up because I've just recently learned how to actually work with leather and it's something I want to improve on so if you guys are also interested in seeing me do that let me know and I might do a video on it in the future when I get all the proper tools and everything. I did film a little bit of the making process of these so let me take you through quickly how these were done. So as I said I used the original band braces that came with the suit as the template for these and used that to cut out the pieces of leather and use an engraving tool to put the, the little details in. I could take this one step further and add the little stitching as well in there but I haven't got around to doing that just yet. So then I just made sure the leather was nice and wet. I didn't sort of dip it or anything. I just used a sponge to go over. So then that kind of makes it a little bit uneven because I wanted the, the actual leather dye to go on a bit unevenly again, just to get that nice worn and sort of weathered look. And then dyed it again using the sort of sponge method. So bits might be darker in some areas and lighter in others. Once it had dried, I kind of went over a bit of it with some fine sandpaper again, just to add to sort of the weathering effect before I uh, sealed it with a nice antique wax so the dye isn't gonna start rubbing off or sort of coming off if any of this gets wet, if I happen to go out in the rain. And also that means the sort of the dark wax gets in all the nice grooves and again, adds to the, the whole used and broken down aspect. So then I just took a blade and just sort of scored some marks and lines in it afterwards so I can get that nice sort of colour difference. And just trying to match sort of the scuffs I can kind of see on the in-game character model, as well as adding some nice low profile Velcro on the back. So when it's together, because it's low profile Velcro, you don't get a huge sort of bump that you get with a normal Velcro. And I've spoken a lot about weathering in this video, so that also needed to happen with this vault suit. So the majority of the weathering on this suit is just airbrushed in using just some black paint that watered down so it wasn't too heavy. Sort of tried to keep that airbrushing in certain areas like in all the edges of the grooves. Just going like this. It just sort of brings out the detailing of the suit as well. Just makes it look a little bit more striking. And then also went over it by hand with a paintbrush just using some more browns and oranges just to sort of get that more ingrained sort of dusty dirty look. Focusing on areas that I know would be used quite a lot like the knees, so the knees are especially dirty, you know you'd be crouching aiming your gun at like super mutants or whatever and you know, just trying to go in areas that like dirt will build up more like around the greebly sort of around the shoulders top of the neck kind of things like that. You know the fun doesn't stop there though we've still got to have a load of little trinkets to take with us on our journey 
Now, I do have some that I haven't made or modified yet to go with the suit, as well as a laser pistol, which is still in the I need to finish making it aspect, because I don't like sanding 3D prints. So if you play the games, you know you always have a lot of random stuff in your inventory. So we've also got to have that with us on the costume. All my accessories, aside from like my Pip-Boy and a couple of bits I'm going to show you now, are finished. You already saw the Vault-Tec lunchbox that I had on my belt. That is one of the collectibles from the Fallout 3 pre-order. But I've made some other bits as well, and I will hopefully be getting some more bits done in time for when I'm going to take this out, which is going to be probably the Saturday of uh, London MCM. My club is coming back for all three days with the stand, but I'll be wandering around as the Vault Dweller at least for one day. So keep an eye out for me. So, first up has got to be the Pip-Boy. There have been several different versions of the Pip-Boy seen throughout the games, and the show also has its own version. Again, this is the Fallout 4 inspired one. This is actually my favourite design of the Pip-Boy. The one from like Fallout 3 in New Vegas was a sort of slimmer version, but I kind of like the sort of retro chunkiness of the Fallout 4 version. And this is one I actually got secondhand. This is part of the Pip-Boy edition Fallout 4 pre-order. Someone was selling this on eBay for I think it was about £70, and that came with everything that that pre-order had, not just this Pip-Boy, which is great. And it's a model where you can actually put your phone inside of the Pip-Boy, and there's a particular app. I don't think it's on the App Store anymore, but I think you can get it somewhere else, but I just happen to have the app still. So I'm using my old, quite broken phone as the screen. You see, it's quite small, it doesn't fill the whole thing, but it'll do, because that's all I've got. And of course, you know we had to customize and weather this. Again, try to match what you can see in the actual in-game model. This is what it looked like beforehand, so this is how it comes. It's very shiny, very plasticky. Uh, it looks pretty cheap, so obviously wanted to change that up a bit. So first things first was to get rid of that shine. Now normally we'd like sand it down and maybe give it a repaint, but there's so many small little lettering details and stuff on here that I didn't want to lose. So this got taped up and sprayed in a two-part satin lacquer. Uh, stuff that's actually made for going on plastic. So it's actually staying on there fairly well. It doesn't come off easy. It just makes it look a hell of a lot better. It's still got a little bit of shine to it. It's not completely matte. And the same weathering techniques you saw me use on the armor has been used on the Pip-Boy. The one thing you've got to be aware of is when it comes to the Pip-Boy, because it's now got this satin lacquer on it, so it's now essentially got a uh, type of paint on it, certain paints will act to weathering differently. So if I was to go all over this with a big black wash, it wouldn't come out because the satin lacquer kind of just sort of eats the black wash and it just, it gets stained. So instead of doing that, just with a paintbrush, just going in certain areas and just sort of dabbing it in, just being very careful sort of where I want that because I know it's not gonna come off otherwise. And then using our dirt and acrylic paint mix, again, just going in those certain areas, making things look rusty, yeah, making things look like they've built up dirt. And as you can see, I've also added some dirt on the screen too, because this app, whilst you can connect it uh, to your in-game Pip-Boy, so you can have all your in-game inventory on here, it's been a while and I haven't actually managed to successfully get this to connect in the present day to the app. But it does have demo mode on here, because even if it did connect to the game, if you're away from your console, you still wouldn't be able to connect. So you can't just like mess with the inventory on the go, but it does have demo mode, so you do still get all these parts that show up on here. The only downside is there's a little bit on the screen that flashes the words demo mode, so I have just hidden it with strategic dirt so I just sharpied over the area that flashes demo mode and then put a load of weathering on top you'll see about here so the little lights that you can see on the pit boy that's just something that comes with this as well there's a little battery hidden under this little section that you lift up in order to put your phone in so that's just a little watch battery so aside from the the paint job and having to have a phone spare or you could even make your own screen if you're really good at that not a huge amount you have to do to get this pit boy to look really nice. Now for the stuff that would pop up in my inventory, just a couple of little props that I've already made. So first up we've got a little bottle of buff out. It actually started off life as a bottle of gummy vitamins which are kind of the right shape and size with this nice green lid. 
So all I did for this was take off the original label, spray paint the inside brown. So spray painting the inside means the paint isn't gonna chip off from the plastic on the outside and you still get that nice plastic shine of the actual bottle. So it looks like it was always meant to be brown. Just don't put anything in it because it's been dry for ages yet it still stinks of paint. Printed off a brand new buff out label. There's a bunch of people online that have taken the labels out of the games or have made their own based on assets from the games. This particular buff out label is from a maker called Moltenel72. Apologies if I pronounced that wrong. And this was on DeviantArt. And then just word it up again using the same techniques that we've been using all throughout this build. Next up is the packet of grey tortoise cigarettes. The artwork is made by someone called Milky Shakester, again on DeviantArt, and they have two versions of their artwork, and one of them actually has a net on it, so you can see where to bend and glue certain parts together. So I printed that off and glued it onto some thin cardboard that you get from cereal boxes. My character hangs around with Nick Valentine a lot, so you know, she's always picking up cigarettes for him. And inside we actually do have a couple. Now these are made very, very simply by cutting up a length of just normal paper, rolling it up to the thickness that I want, gluing it together, using a little bit of hot glue on one end, just sort of dabbing it on, and then painting it just to make it look like cigarette ash, and then using a part of a plaster on the other end, just again, give it that color and the different texture on the side. So it's a nice, easy way to make cigarettes without actually having to go get cigarettes. And lastly, we have a tin of Mentats. Now this label is actually from Fallout 3 because it actually matches the tin that I bought better. I found it while I was thrifting and it already had this sort of yellow paint job on it and it was nice and rusty already and it really looked the part and it was just about the right size. And I actually do prefer the Fallout 3 label to the Fallout 4 one. So uh, kind of moving away from the Fallout 4 canon couldn't find the original poster of this art. I don't know if it's just ripped from the game or if someone's made it. So again, I printed that off, glued it on, blended it in with the rust that was already on the tin and filled it full of bobby pins. Now I just need to make a screwdriver to go with the bobby pins and then I can unlock any door because I have the master level lock pick. So the final parts of the costume, because I like having my face covered, I think that just comes from years of wearing Stormtrooper armor and getting very used to having a helmet. I've got the aviators and a skull bandana. So the aviators are pretty simple. I already had a pair of aviators hanging around that I bought years ago. So those are just weathered again with the same acrylic, just sort of make them blend in a little bit more and they don't look super clean. The skull bandana itself is actually hand painted. So it was painted on a piece of white fabric. I drew everything up just using a pencil. Again, just had some screenshots in game for reference before going over it with some black fabric paint. The funny thing about this particular bandana is I realized to actually get the shape kind of close to what's in game, I had to cut it at a really weird sort of angle. So if you buy a normal bandana, it's just a square of fabric. And if you were to tie it around your face, it kind of gets pretty long at the front. And the in-game bandanas are really short. They, they don't come that far past your chin. So in order to get that effect, I had to cut it so it looks like a very odd manta ray. So it remains short enough in the front, but still long in the sides, so I can still tie it around my face, but not have it sort of dangling all over the place. I still need to sort of tweak this so it's not like sticking out because having layers of paint on fabric stiffens it up. So I need to sort of work this to make it a little bit more malleable. Also just to thicken it up and make it a little bit more comfortable, that piece of white fabric that I've painted on, I've sewn together with a piece of black fabric. Again, so when it's folded and layered over each other, you've got this nice clean black fabric in the back. And it doesn't look like just a really thin piece of just cheap fabric that has been painted on. And that's it. That's going through my Fallout costume. I hope you guys enjoyed. Sorry I didn't film everything like I normally do. Yeah, I was just kind of putting things together and literally just forgetting that I should be filming for YouTube because I've been gone for a little while. But if you guys do want to see the things that I do, do suggest follow me on Instagram if you have an Instagram account. I normally post progress pictures up on there because I don't do Patreon anymore now that I'm not around here as much. So I normally post on my stories of stuff I'm building and then when it looks nice and I'll post it to my main feed. So that's the best way to keep up with what I'm doing is come check out my Instagram. All my links as always are down below and as I said I'll probably be seeing you guys at MCM in May my Star Wars Costume Club Imperial Outlanders we've got another stand again this year so I'll be there most of the time but again on the Saturday I'll probably be wandering off because I just want to take a little bit of a break from the Star Wars stuff 
and go out and meet some of my fellow Fallout fans. And if anyone's new to the Fallout franchise, so they've gotten into it from the new TV series, which at time of recording, I am now halfway through watching. I didn't want to binge it all in once. I'm trying to eke it out a little bit. And it's absolutely fantastic. I am so happy that we've got a really good video adaptation and it's a good one of a franchise that I really enjoy. And I hope this video has helped you if you're looking to get into doing more cosplay stuff again. Check out the other stuff that's on my account. I am still very slowly making my Green Goblin costume from Turn Off The Dark. That is still happening. It's just very slow. I've just finished the prosthetic sculpt. So I'll be looking to cast that and then make the wig. So there's still a fair bit to do. But when that's done, that'll be another video. And maybe I'll get some other stuff out in between then. I don't know. So again, thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video, which hopefully won't be like about 10 months away from the last one. Again, sorry, I'm still here, just been very busy. See you guys next time. Bye.